this little video to go through a couple of examples on the board to help you as you go through your homework. So we're going to go through two examples. This is the first one. If we look at the PowerPoint slide here, it says, in Cocker Spaniels, black coat color, big B, is dominant over red, little b, and solid color, big S, is dominant over spotted, little s. If the male that is homozygous dominant for both traits is crossed with a female that is heterozygous for both traits, what will their puppies look like and what fraction of puppies will have each phenotype? Okay, so this is a lot of information. The first thing that I do with a pennant square is I ask the question, what do the parents look like? So we'll write that on the board. We have the dad and we have the mom. And the information tells us that the dad is homozygous dominant for both traits. That means that he's going to have all capital letters and homozygous means that he has identical alleles. So he's going to have two big B's and two big S's. And his phenotype would be black and solid. The female or the mother is heterozygous for both traits. Big B, little b, big S, little s. So we figured out who the parents are. The next step is we need to figure out what gametes those parents can make. The dad has big B's and big S's. And remember when you make the gametes, each gamete has half the number of alleles as the parent does. So since the parent has four letters, the gamete will have two letters. And we're going to make sure that it has one of each type of letter. So the gamete for the dad, he can give a big B, he can give a big S. And that's the only option. The mom has more options. So you need to look at all the different combinations possible. She could give a big B and a big S for a gamete. She could give a big B and a little S, or a little B and a big S, or a little B and a little S. Okay, and these are all equally possible. And you could have put these in a different order and that would still be fine. So we figured out the gametes and the next thing is to make your Punnett square. And I always ask the question, how many boxes is my Punnett square going to have? And you have as many boxes as you have gametes. So the dad has one gamete, the mom has four gametes, so we can make this as a four by one Punnett square. You could still make this as a four by four and that wouldn't be wrong, but we're gonna make it as a four by one. And I'm gonna go over here where I have some room and I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to make four boxes. I'm going to put the dad's gametes on the side and all the different options for the mom along the top. And again, you could do this in whatever order you wanted to. Let me erase mom here so you can see this a little bit easier. And then I'm going to fertilize in each box. So I'm going to bring the B's and the S's down and the B's and the S's across. I'm going to keep my B's together and my S's together. And these are all the potential offspring that these two dogs could have. So, let's go back to the question which was asking what are the different um, what will their puppies look like? So it's asking for phenotype and what fraction of the puppies will have each phenotype. So we have the genotypes over here. Let's figure out if it has two big B's and two big S's. Big B means black, big S means solid. So we're going to have 25% that are black and solid. We'll have Going on to the next box, black. This is also going to be solid because it's heterozygous. Okay, so another box that is black and solid. Third one, black, 
solid. Okay, so we're seeing a pattern here because they all have a big B. And then the last one is also black and solid. This one is heterozygous, but the phenotype is still going to be the same. So our answer to the question would be that 100% of the offspring for these two dogs mating would be black and solid. Um, let's go on now to our second example. And I can, which is going to be looking at a different trait and we're going to be looking at an example for horses. We're going to go through the same steps. In horses, black coat color is coated by a dominant allele, big B, and a chestnut coat color is coated by the recessive allele, little b. Trotting gait is due to a dominant allele, big T, and pacing gait to the recessive allele, little t. We have a heterozygous black trotter. He is heterozygous for both traits. Is crossed with a chestnut pacer. And the question is asking what percentage of the offspring will be chestnut pacers. So, starting with the same steps, we're going to figure out what the parents look like. We have a heterozygous black trotter, we'll say that's the dad. Heterozygous for both traits, so big B, little b, big T, little t. Crossed with a chestnut pacer. And I don't tell you exactly what the genotype is here, but you can figure that out. We know that chestnut is a recessive trait, and having a pacing gait is also a recessive trait. That individual has to be homozygous recessive. So by reading back through the question, you could figure that out. So chestnut pacer is going to be homozygous recessive. Two little b's and two little t's. So we figured out what our parents look like. Now we have to figure out what gametes they can make. Let's start with the mom, because she's the easy one. She can only give her offspring a little b and a little t. She doesn't have any other options. The dad has four options. So we're going to put together all the different combinations of b's and t's. Big b, big t. Big b, little t. Little b, big t. And little b, little t. Okay. So we figured out the gametes. The last step before we can make our Punnett square, how many boxes are we going to put in our Punnett square? And this is going to be another one that is four, because the dad has four gametes, by one. So let's set this up meet here so that I have room to make the Punnett square. I'm going to put the dads on the top this time. And then the mom can only make a little b and a little t. Now, if you wanted to make this a 4 by 4 you could. That's not wrong. I could make this 16 boxes. And then all I would do was put the same gamete for the mom all the way down. So these other three rows would be copies of my first row. I'm just going to fill in the first row. I'm going to join the gametes, sperm and egg, in each box. So there are all of our offspring. And the question is asking, what percentage of the offspring will be chestnut pacers? So if we look at the first box, this one has a big B and it has a big T. So it's definitely not going to be a chestnut pacer. We can cross that one out. Second one is big B, so it's going to be black. It does have two little T's, so it would be a pacer, but it's still not chestnut, so we can cross that one out. This one is chestnut with two little B's, but it's a trotter because it has a capital T, so that one's not right. And this one, two little B's is going to make it chestnut, two little T's is going to make it a pacer, so this one is going to be a chestnut pacer. So this was one out of four possibilities, or the same thing as 25%. So that would be the